That's a consequence of it. And if today, therefore, the political party that is opposed to us finds itself in a situation where dirty linen has had to be washed in public, it has nothing to do so much with the politicians you know, of the day. It has more to do with the system by which their political party is organized. It has to do with a consequence of that, an inevitable consequence of a method of internal organization that suggests in the selection of persons to high office, one man, one vote. You conclude, I'm sure, exactly what I have concluded, that even though some things may sound right, they're not always right at all. And behind them lurk many, many dangers. One man, one vote sounds right. That was the mantra in 1946 when we achieved adult franchise for the first time. Internal organization suggests something else. So that when in the opposition political party, in the exercise that is being conducted today, people get up on platforms and say all kinds of things about each other. I wonder what did people expect? I wonder what did people expect? It was a natural consequence of the method of organization of the political party. It's a natural consequence of that. But not only that, I have been taking very careful note of what the commentators have had to say about that. They were very loud in their condemnation of what some people had to say about others. Because, you see, who is involved in it will be their favorite son or their favorite daughter. If it were money, or if it were call a heart, they wouldn't take that view. What they would say, what they would say, my dear friends, is that the public has a right to know. That's what they would say. That's what they would say. The public has a right to know, but the minute you see it is a favorite son or favorite daughter involved, then something is fundamentally wrong about it. The very same voices raised today. When in the year 2002, on the eve of the general elections of that year, when that dirty trick was played on the political leader of the PNM on the Sunday before, what did they have to say? I heard not one voice raised in condemnation of it. Not one voice. Rather than doing that, they have been seeking to prove what is unprovable, my dear friends, just does not exist. Just does not exist, it's unprovable. The same way, you know, don't care how I say in Parliament that I didn't sell a car to a drug dealer, didn't do it. They went out of their way. In fact, the person to whom I sold the car, they approached that person and told the person that if you would say that you sold, that money didn't sell the car, you sold it to somebody else, then we'll give you a certain sum of money. The person refused to do it and came straight to me and let me know the approach that was made to me. That is what it is like. That is what it is like, my dear friends. And those of us who choose to submit ourselves for public office have to understand that our lives are open books. The life is an open book. And in many respects, you know, if people are being called upon to select those who will put in positions of high authority, then they must know as much about that person as is necessary for them to know. The British people, the British people after the Second World War broke out, they elected to office Sir Winston Churchill, you know. He, he was a heavy drinker. Since alcohol seems to be the topic of the day. <laughs> he was a heavy drinker. Winston Churchill and the people of the United Kingdom knew that. But what they said was this. We were facing the juggernaut of Germany. We were facing an agglomeration of countries that were much stronger than us. And in those circumstances, what we wanted was not somebody who drank or didn't drink. What we wanted was somebody who had the strength to be able to hold our people together and to lead us to a very dark period of the country's history into light and into success. That's what they voted for. And Winston Churchill did just that. And the minute, my dear friends, the war was over, they voted him out of office. 
conscious of what they were doing, conscious of what they were doing. That's the point. So if we know that somebody drinks, don't we have a right to know, my dear friends? Yeah. Now, the way it became public is not a matter for me to comment on. I'm not commenting on that. That is their business. And I noticed incidentally, I think I better say, <laughs> since everybody seems to have a filing, <laughs> and everybody else, I think I should let you, members of the PLM, know that I am keeping my own file on everybody. <laughs> that is you see? And then you see, but you see, my dear friends, so you get up today and you say A, B, and C about your colleagues, and then tomorrow you expect to come, you expect to come tomorrow to the National Committee and say, well, yesterday was yesterday, today is today, and tomorrow is tomorrow. We kiss and make up. And expect the people of Trinidad and Tobago to accept that and vote you in the position of high office. That's what they expect. Say what you want about the PNM. Are we guilty of any of that? Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, the discipline of the PNM has been its strength. The conduct of internal businesses internally has been a strength of the people's national movement. It's been a strength. And all of those who condemn it, you watch and see. A time is going to come and all of them will put their political tails between their political legs and begin to emulate, and begin to emulate exactly the method of organization that today governs the conduct of political affairs in the People's National Movement. We have everything to be proud of. Everything to be proud of. My dear friends, when Eric Williams named the political party, he didn't call it the People's National Party. He called it the People's National Movement. And the words were carefully chosen. And he went on to say that we are not a political party in the ordinary sense of the word. Rather, we are a gathering of forces and so on and so on, of all and for the interest of the people and so on. You know what he had to say about that. But he named it movement. Movement suggests a certain amount of dynamism, that the political party was not expected to be a static organization, but that the party will change. The party will change over time as is required by the people of Trinidad and Tobago. So the PNM of 1956 is not the PNM of 1971, when I became a member. And the PNM today, my dear friends, of 2010, is fundamentally different, you know, from aspects of the PLM, but there's one thing that never changes. Our philosophy doesn't change. Our vision is only modernized. And the program by which we implement the vision changes according to the requirements of the day. Fundamentally same. You read the constitution of the PLM and you'll see the aims and objectives. We made one change that is fundamental over the years. We looked at our structure, and we concluded that the Women's League was a successful uh, body, very successful. Its method of organization, we thought, was responsible for it. And therefore, we made a change in the way the Youth League was structured. And today, to become a member of the PLM, you have to join a party group. If you are female, you are eligible to be a member of the Women's League. If you are under 25, you are eligible to be a member of the Youth League. And in doing that, that is to say, making the party group the basic unit of the political organization, we have eliminated all the difficulties that have been traditionally associated with young people moving from the Youth League into the adult section of the party. People are people. Party group is the basic method of organization. In other words, we have modernized. We have modernized one way, and there are so many other respects. The government that has come out of the People's National Movement, successive governments, are governments of which this country can be justifiably proud, my dear friends. And we are not afraid to face the scrutiny of the electorate. We're not afraid of that. We've gone to the polls, we've won most of the election, we lost a few, so what? We lose. 